Good uh, evening, uh, future doctors, future um, leaders of our medical faculties, and definitely future surgeons. Today's topic is going to be based on our two objectives. We have begun the uh, series of topic two, which is a series of the upper limbs. Uh, the upper limbs is going to involve us with understanding the regions in the first objectives and the second objective will be understanding the shoulder ghetto. So without wasting any time, let us uh, first uh, understand which regions we are going to be talking about in topic number two. Okay, so uh, the first part of understanding topic number one is understanding the regions. The first region we're going to talk about is uh, the shoulder ghetto. The shoulder ghetto is made out of two bones. The first bone is the clavicle and the second bone is the scapula. So let me just type in uh, that for you so that you could have an understanding. The first bone is, as I said, um, the clavicle. Um, just I'll just increase um, the shift to I think 14 so it could be visible. I think that's visible enough. Clavicle, that's the spelling over there, clavicle, and the second bone over here is definitely gonna be the scapula. One second. Not. Okay, the second bone is going to be the scapula. Well, we're having a little bit of some problem with the typing. I'll just type it down over here. Just do all of this. And we'll call this scapula. Okay, so these are the only two bones that you have in the shoulder ghetto. The second bones uh, we are going to be talking about is, um, the second part we'll talk about is um, uh, the bones of um, the arm, which is the humerus. And um, <clears throat> the next part I'm going to talk about is the forearm. And uh, sorry about that, the next part will be the forearm. And the last part will be the hand. So today we'll focus mainly on the shoulder ghetto. The shoulder ghetto is made out of two bones, which is the clavicle and the scapula. And these are the bones which we're going into detail to understand the anatomy of these bones. And then from the bones, we'll talk about the blood vessels. So we'll first talk about bones, and then we'll talk about the nerves. Then after we talk about the nerves, we'll talk about the blood vessels. After we talk about the blood vessels, we are also going to talk about the muscles. And then when we talk about the muscles, we'll talk about the lymphatic system. After we talk about the lymphatic system, we are going to bring all this information together and talk about how we can treat a patient with an infection in this shoulder region, considering where the nerves are passing, where the important blood vessels are passing, so where should we make the cut and why should, shouldn't should we make the cut where it is most dangerous. You understand? So firstly, you have to understand the muscle setup of the shoulder ghetto before you get into uh, understanding how these muscles are innervated and so on and so forth. So first, let's talk about the bones and then from there, we'll talk about the nerves. So, the bones in the shoulder ghetto are only two, the clavicle and the scapula. The clavicle and the scapula, as you can see over here, this is the scapula and this is the clavicle. So, the scapula has got um, the following parts. Uh, the first part you should understand is the anterior part, anterior surface, and it's got a posterior surface over here. And then it's got two ends. It's got a medial end and it's got a lateral end medial and lateral and then it only forms two joints okay so there's joint number one here and there's joint number two here the first joint is going to make is the joint between the end of the clavicle the medial end of the clavicle and the sternum over here so you're going to have the sternum over here as you can see 
are like solves over here. You see here, you have this end and you have this end. So this is the going to be known as the sternum. This bone is known as the sternum and this bone is known as the clavicle. So this will be known as the sternoclavicular joint. Okay. This will be known as the sternoclavicular joint. Sternoclavicular joint. And then the other joint you have, which is here, over here, You're going to have this other joint over here. This joint is going to be known as the acromion. clavicular joint so the clavicle as i said forms only two joints it's got one joint here which is known as the acromionoclavicular joint not acromiono the stenoclavicular joint and the second joint over here which is known as the um acromionoclavicular joint the other part you should understand about the sternum is that uh, the two-thirds of the uh, sternum over here, it is forward and anterior. So this part is caved in ahead. When you touch your, uh, your shoulder, when you touch your um, anterior part of your chest, you will feel that the sternum is protruding forwards. So this protrusion forwards is known as the convex two-thirds. This is important because when you have uh, a fracture here, there are blood vessels just right below here. There are blood vessels just right below here which run. And when you fracture this bone, the fracture is going to lead to injury to this blood vessel at the bottom. I hope you understand. So the two things you should remember about the clavicular uh, bone is that it's got two ends. It's got the medial end over here and the lateral end over there. The medial end joins with the sternum to form the sternoclavicular joint. The lateral end makes the acromionoclavicular joint. That's it about the, clavic uh, the clavicular bone. Now let's talk about the scapula, which is much more interesting and very, very important part of this lesson. The, cl the clavicle has got uh, two parts. You should remember. Two surfaces. This is known as the anterior surface and this is known as the posterior surface so when you touch your back your back your spine you are going to be looking at the post you're going to be touching the posterior surface of the clavicle when you touch your chest you're going to be touching the anterior surface of the clavicle okay going forward um, it's got the following angles it's got the superior angle the inferior angle and the lateral angle. So this one is the superior angle, inferior angle, and lateral angle. Okay? And then it also has got three um, borders. It's got the medial border, it's got the uh, lateral border, and the superior border. Then it also has got three processes. It's very interesting. It only has three, three, three. But there's one, two. So this is going to be uh, three processes is going to be the scapular spine over here, yes, and then it's going to have this process over here, which is known as the acromion process, and then the other process you're going to have is this process over here, which is known as the coracoid process. So it's got process number one, the acromion process, process number two, coracoid process, and the last process it has is over here, which is the what? the scapula spine okay i hope this is clear the next thing we're going to talk about the scapula is that it's got two joints it's got joint over here which is known as the acromionoclavicular joint and the other joint is has is here which is known as the shoulder joint these are the only joints you should remember about the scapula only two joints acromiono and clavicular joint, acromiono clavicular joint over here, and the shoulder joint over here. With that being said, uh, let us do a short uh, 
recap on uh, what we have said about the scapula it's got two surfaces the anterior and posterior surfaces it's got uh, three borders the, lat the medial border the superior border lateral border it's got uh, three uh, angles the superior angle the inferior angle and the lateral angle it also has got three processes which is the spine and the acromional process over here and the last process is known as the coracoid process and the other most important part i want you to understand is that it's got fossas so when you're looking at the posterior surface it's got this fossa over here which is known as the infraspinatus because it is below the spine and then it's got another fossa over here which is known as the supraspinatus fossa and the last fossa it has is on the anterior surface which is known as the subscapular fossa this is all you need to know about the scapular bones and this is all you need to know about the shoulder ghetto thank you so much for uh, watching this video and understanding the shoulder ghetto because this will be the first part of um, the uh, five parts of um, the shoulder ghetto we'll be looking at where we'll talk about the bones we'll talk about the nerves and then we'll talk about the blood vessels we'll talk about the muscles and then finally we'll talk about the lymphatic system which is going to help us to summarize everything about the shoulder gen uh, shoulder ghetto in how we operate on the shoulder ghetto watch this video again and shortly after this video i'm going to call you guys so that we could have a lecture on the nerves bye bye and uh see you soon in the lecture on the nerves